Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here, Brown's All Maintenance. Hope you guys are doing well. Location, location, over here in Muskegon, Michigan, over at Snow Power. Got some really exciting things we're gonna show you guys today, especially if you guys are into the uh, snow plow game, and plowing snow, making that dough, uh, this will be your video today. We're actually uh, over here getting our plow service, getting some work done, and you guys good, no good old Rick. How we doing, buddy? Hey, hey. Welcome out, man, how you doing? Doing good. Well, welcome out. Good I'm, to see you. I'm welcoming in, you know. That's right. <laughs> um, we got a bunch of stuff going on today. We can do cutting edge, get some servicing done on the plow. Are we going to talk about new things today? Yeah, we are. All right, all right. I don't know what we're uh, in store for, but uh, hey, really quick, before we jump into it too far, in case people don't know who you are, I always like to start with that on the videos. Um, you are like one of the OGs in the industry. You've brought so much to the table from work to employment to innovation to equipment uh some of you guys know rick's story but for some of them that don't what's your background brother long care and snow plowing my whole life and fortunate enough to think about things and be um not necessarily an engineer but an imagineer and we came up with the hurricane blower uh the the back blade the way it connects to the truck so solid and this new front plow f14 f12 and we do have a U plow for utility. We got a pretty cool seven foot plow that's going on a Kubota. That's pretty cool. But uh, just living the dream, I was able to come up with some cool stuff and make it happen. There you go. And uh, not only make it happen, but made some money along the way, amen? Oh yeah. There you go. I forgot about Hurricane, of course. Yep, yep. My, in the past, I was Hurricane Rick. Hurricane Rick. Uh, this logo right here, for some of you guys that don't know. So here's the old Hurricane uh, logo and uh, color scheme. And actually I see a couple of those units still floating around over here. You wanna show them really quick? Sure. Let's go down memory lane. Uh, give Bryce and those guys a minute to breathe. They're changing out our cutting edge. So oh, this- a flat tire here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this is the X3. And we made a Z3 and we made a 314. Um, just back in the day. Cool stuff, it blows three different ways. I'm yeah. Sure you guys seen it. Now it's branded, um, Let's see, what's it for? Billy Ferris Goat. and Billy Go. Yep. Which you've got one. Yeah, I got I the P2000, the little one. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I, I need to upgrade to a Z3 or an X3 because um, I'm missing that front blowout option. Yeah. yeah. It is really important. It, it, it is between helpful. Between buildings, everything, sidewalks, you just. Fence lines. Yeah. Just to punch it through. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so this was the claim to fame. And you always said that you had like two. Two favorite children, right? You talked about that once on the podcast. Yeah. Tell, tell them how, how Snow Power and Hurricane both came to be. Well, it, they both came to be through necessity. I had Tiffany Woods with the, with the leaves, and I had a stand-on riding blower, or lawnmower, and I got sick of pushing the blower, so we tied it together. And that was, what, 20 years ago? In 08 is when it all started, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And in 10 years, we sold this in 2018. 2018. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, time. Sorry, guys. You got some noise. <laughs> uh, time the market right, did a really well uh, exit strategy, and um, became uh, pretty much the entrepreneurial dream, you know? Like, yeah. That's really, it's really the American cool. dream. Or the American dream. It really is. That's so cool. And then uh, help me out with snow power, because you see a bunch of the different blades behind here. Where, where did that come into uh, play? How, how'd you come up with the, the snow power business? Well, it was the rear plow before I sold uh, Hurricane. I ended up with uh, building rear plows for about three or four years. And we've been plowing with rear plows in Western Michigan since the late 80s. Okay. So I've got a fair amount of time behind on a back blade. And it was really hard to get it on the truck because everybody mounted to just two foot of the frame in the back. And I'm like, there's gotta be a better way. Mm. And that's how we were able to come up with the fifth wheel rails and the Reese hitch. And I know it'll fit your truck and every other truck because everybody can get the fifth wheel rails and the Reese hitch. So it goes on your truck in a matter of two, three hours and you're plowing commercially. Wow, that's awesome. And productivity game changer too. Oh yeah, big time with the wings that go backwards and everything, yeah. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that. Uh, your content, Stanley Dirt Monkeys channel, um, I think I got to help out a video one day with you guys uh, five years five years ago. That Hold was, up, guys. That was really cool. Yeah, five, right. that was what, about five years ago? That was really cool. It so, was. I remember you coming through here when we were building the Hurricanes, too. That was cool. Well, Stanley just happened to be uh, two miles up the road, and uh, we all lucked out, and he kind of yeah. came on in and blew it up for everybody, you know? Plow some snow with him you did over there. Yeah. Yeah. One of those empty parking lots, so big K. Yeah. That's awesome. And then I licensed that to... Uh, to boss okay. because I knew what I wanted to do on the front. 
because I've been trying to sell the rear plow and everybody says, oh, I've got a salt spreader, I can't put it on the rear. Why don't you put a front plow on the, or a rear plow on the front? So we literally did that to start the process for the F-12 and the F-14. And uh, that's where we're at now. Now we, we've got 14 foot on the front of a truck. Is that this guy right behind us? This is, <laughs> this is the new one. Yeah. This is the absolute new one. Uh, we took it to the show, equipped this year. Yeah. And uh, we're back ordered. There's a lot of cool stuff that's going on. We got cool jack stands that literally lifts the plow up three or four inches to take it off because everybody has a kickstand and it holds it there. And then it settles down. You can't get on it, and then you're using a jack. Wait, so not to interrupt you. So is this the one I have? Because mine does not have jack stands. Is this the same one? No, no. This is different. This is version two, new this year. Oh wow! We only have seven, seven hoses on it. They're all nice and tight. What I did is I made a list of all the things that I wanted to make better. It's not that the old F12 and 14 didn't work, but I have a problem with trying to make it better all the time. That's the entrepreneur curse. That's right. <laughs> So we ended up doing it with uh, different types of cylinders. We only have one push cylinder now in the center instead of two push cylinders. We have our, our trip cylinders are different. They're better. It just all functions better. But it still plows. If you had your, your truck and I put this on my truck, we'd still plow the same amount of snow. Right. But over time, the maintenance would be less on this one. So this is all not re-engineered from the ground up, but just no. some improvements and uh, changes over the last 12, 18 months. Correct. Wow. If you had a, a lift kit on your truck, that's what these four holes here, we can literally move the, this is the, the truck iron. Okay. And then we can move the plow up and down through these holes. So if you were two inches higher, you can just grab the hole that fits your truck. Is that because Bryson's got all lifted trucks? Yeah, he always adds a two inch <laughs> leveling kit, but it adjusts it. Yep. Bryson, your son, by the way, watch, uh, you got the, uh, the empire in good hands. Oh yeah. 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 He's, he's getting good. old now. Yeah. He's, uh, 25, 25. I think last time I met him, uh, first time it was like 16, 17 year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, I was only 32. Yeah. So we're all getting older. <laughs> but he's a veteran. He was on a skid steer when he was six or seven. So, wow. That's incredible. And, and for anybody who doesn't know, you guys have a machine shop where you make all this, and this is more the assembly uh, shop where you assemble all this. This is the remnants of the old hurricane business yeah. that Snow Power took over now. But you got full shops that put, assemble all this and yeah. put it all together. That's One of the coolest things is we build our own hydraulic cylinders. Really? I don't know of many people that do it. And another thing is they're all powder coated, not wet coated. But yeah, we build every part about the cylinder because I was concerned because we're adding the nitrogen with the hydraulics and it's neutralics. And uh, we didn't want to just trust anybody to do it. Sure. So we brought Parker in and learned all the seals and all the, all the stuff about it. That's and incredible. this year, like right here, this is the accumulator. Old style, it was a tube that was alongside the hydraulic cylinder. Okay. And now we have the accumulator around it. It functions the same, but I can build it faster and better, and it fits better because it's in a, a better environment. It's not so big. Wow. I just applied for the patent on that, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, you were telling me uh, in the other building what you spent on R&D and patents. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, you guys are literally like the American dream and machine shop, Muskegon, Michigan, figuring it all out. You guys, you're, I met your uh, right-hand guy, your engineer. Yeah, one, one Mike of them. Rakovich, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's the wizard that puts it uh, from your mind to reality. The first hurricane. Wow. Every piece of it, I kind of come to him as an Imagineer, and he brings the high-end engineering part of it so we can have a good product. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So let's, uh, if anybody doesn't know, we'll go uh, bug Bryson over there in a second. But the uh, the F-14 is what we ran last year, and I can't speak more highly of it. I, I mean, honestly, folks, uh, we have another truck on order with a, a V-Blade from a different brand, different role in my company. But my second truck, I wanted a parking lot productivity machine. Can you talk to me about that for just a quick minute? The 14 versus a an eight foot, a nine foot blade from some of the other guys, all good plows, but this is a, who is this for? Why did you guys end up coming up with this guy? Well, it, because of the volume, we wanted to have a rear plow, but not everybody wants it because of the salt spreader. Yep. So you get 14 foot here. And then I had a problem when you get 14 feet and you're trying to plow 
a, a parking lot, it's V'd or up or down, and then I came up with the active cutting edge. So yeah, this is 14, but it literally scrapes better than a V-plow. I agree. Because of the active cutting edge, you have three inches. So with a V-plow, when you're going, you can't always keep it 100%, it's called plumb or true. So when you're pushing, the tips might be up, or when you're back, they might be down. With this, it just, you tune it with the, with the trip cylinders, and then you get this adjustment right, but you have a big sweet spot because the cutting edge can move three inches forward or back. Yeah. So they're always touching the ground. It's like you hand shot. Well, you. Yeah. You saw it. You, yeah. You ran it. Well, I mean, uh, I think just wore out. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, we had about six or so big events, and they're all wet, heavy snows. And where this thing shined for me personally was the productivity in parking lots, big one, two, three acre sites. But then the back dragging. We had to do so yeah. much back dragging because it was so patting it down pressure. Yeah, I'm telling you, like I, I can't speak highly enough. This this cutting edge went all the way down to the ground. And other than probably a back blade rick, which I don't have too much experience with, yeah. I've never seen anything back dragging cut right down to the ground. Back dragging garages, loading docks. I can't I'm not here to sell anybody on the plow. I'm just telling you straight up. This is one of the best plows I've ever seen out there in the marketplace. Well, it took me two three years to do it, but a lot of it's got to do with what they call the rake angle on the cutting edge. Okay. Everybody else is back here tipped. Yeah, it cuts well, but when you back drag it, smears it like butter. Oh, it just, it just rides up. Yeah. Yeah. Where now we have the patent and down pressure, but the rake angle is more straight up and down. Okay. And because of the down pressure, it doesn't chatter. That's why all the other companies, they do this so that it... It doesn't bounce because you can chatter the more straight you are. Okay. With the down pressure, we got rid of the chatter. I shouldn't tell my hidden secrets there, but <laughs> that's that was how down pressure came because we wanted to cut well, but we couldn't because it was chattering. Gotcha. We put the down pressure and then it cuts good. And then the benefit in reverse is you're closer to straight up and down and it just, well, you know, yeah, I, I loading docks. I'm telling you. That's all we dealt with last winter. It was brutal. It was all wet snow, eight inch wet snow, 14 inch snow, five inch wet snow uh, i feel like that's all we got which i'm grateful for that because a lot of folks didn't get much uh but the stuff we were dealing with if i put this thing through the ringer out of any season it would have been that and i can't tell you guys enough how impressed i am that's why we're here getting a new cutting edge on it we're getting it all cleaned up i do have a cylinder that was a little leaky bryson's working with that you guys stand behind what you're putting okay. together um can we go bug him really quick let's go see this thing naked yeah i'm following you guys but here's uh, one of the assembly bays just so you guys know like Rick was talking about, they put everything together. And uh, I just think this is the coolest stuff ever. If you guys want to leave an encouraging word down below for uh, Rick and his team, look at it. They got all the bolts, you know, just it's coming down the assembly line, all the, what is that, grade eight, all that stuff? Yeah, this is all stuff that we cut and we send it out for plating. Wow. And, you know, you got the all the extra hardware that you need that we make ourselves. There you go. Is this uh, our old stuff? <laughs> this is just, Whoa. Yeah, you used all of it, that's for sure. Wow. And then this is the new stuff that's coming on. Look at that. Let's see here. Let's see it right here. No kit. Yeah. We used three inches of that. So um, one thing on the previous video, some people had some feedback or questions about the cutting edge, the thickness, and the material. So does it last less long, but it gives you a better cut? Like, Because that could be a concern for some guys out there. Yep. That's one of, uh, it's not really a negative because the positive outweighs the negative. Okay. But you wore this out in the season. You did a lot of plowing, yep. but the reason it wore out is because it cuts so well with the down pressure and it's okay. only three eighths of an inch thick and it turns it into like a shovel. And okay. The thicker you are, the more it has a hard time cutting. Oh, wow. So if you're using salt, you must have this because it takes way less salt. Sure. Because it doesn't leave that little skim of a quarter inch because of the active cutting edge, everything is scraping like a shovel. So you might go through a little bit more cutting edge, but you'll have a better product, less safer. salt, less cost for the customer. So, and it's safer? Yeah, overall. sure, it's slip and falls. Plastic knees and elbows are way more expensive than a cutting edge. <laughs> Amen to that, brother. Amen to that. Well, uh, so here is the plow without the cutting edge. If you guys find this stuff fascinating, you know, leave me a comment down below. Uh, give us a thumbs up on the video. We're doing our best here to bring you guys some fun content. I'll show you guys a little bit about the, uh, the backside. And yeah, here's the two, the accumulator, like I was saying. Now we have it around the cylinder. Yeah. It just fits better and it's easier for us to make it so we can get it at a better price for you guys, ultimately. There you go. Um, now, anything else that you want to share with these guys about the plow? 
because uh, this is your wheelhouse. Hey, looks like I took a little bit out of the uh, scraping. Uh, yeah, you left them down, huh? Uh, you know, hey, I'm <laughs> sure we hit some sidewalks and some curbs. What do I know? And this was a kickstand, see? And you even said you had to go get a doggone uh, jack yep. to get it on your truck. Yep. With the new jack stand because of the headgear, yep. you slide it down, and when the headgear goes down, it lifts the plow up. The I farther saw, the head gear goes down, the farther the plow goes up. Yeah, I had to get a little $60 jack and uh, get like two inches out of it, you know. Everybody does. That's how it is when you go to put them on. Yeah, yeah. It, it took two seconds to shim you down. To be fair, I only hooked it up like three times last year. I think you guys hooked it up. I, I dropped it once and then I think that was literally the third time. Well, you had you had tranny problems or something. You called me. You're like, oh, no, Rick, is that working? We left it on the truck. Oh. I, I found a tow truck guy to grab the whole flatbed and bring the whole plow with it. Yeah. Uh, and, and frankly, I'm glad that it came up as high as it did. Because if I had a V plow yeah. that was stuck out, I, unless I had power to, which I didn't have any power on the truck, those wings weren't kicked out. That would have been another potential issue. Yeah, transport just lifts the wing I, way up. I had 18, 20 inches of transport. Yeah. Uh, if I had a V plow with those wings dropping low, that would have been a whole, I don't even want to question what would have happened there. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a whole nother conversation, but yeah. All right. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back uh, here for you guys in a second. Maybe we'll grab Bryson, go bug him and uh, we'll keep it going guys. All right. So we're back over here, guys. Check this out. Here's the new cutting edge. Woo that looks good. Check this out. That's five inches, eight inches. What is that? Eight inch? What's that? How big is that cutting edge? Uh, I believe it's actually like 10 and three quarters. Wow. There you I go. Take it depends who's measuring it, right? Guy or girl? <laughs> Fucking, wow, that looks so much better. There you go. Is this two piece or was it always two uh, piece? It was one piece, but now I swapped it to a two piece for shipping purposes. It's actually a lot cheaper. Oh, no kidding. So, good shipping was killing us on it. Oh, yeah. Shipping, shipping was expensive. So now you know, when you got an eight and a half foot long piece, yep. They want to charge you for that footage in the, the trailer. Trailer, whether yep. you know it's you know fifty Just, pounds or not. There you go. So now you know they all. Kind of, we can do a whole kit in you know a three foot long box. Heck yeah. Four foot long box. Makes sense. Makes sense. There you go. What are we at, bud? Um, new cutting edges all the way around. New hardware for the cutting edges. Two new kickstands. Cause you tore this one up pretty good. <laughs> um, replace this wing cylinder cause it was blown out and we dropped your cylinder pressure for your nitrogen here. So it won't pick up and drop as fast. All right. Little uh, tweaks, little updates, yep. but we're good to go. Uh, getting there. All right. Couple more things to finish up and then you'll be out of here. There you go. Bryson, how are we doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. <laughs> Just got to tighten this one down since we didn't, uh, Pull the plastic off of it from factory. So yeah, your your dad was yelling at you, bro. I know. You said you got a there's like two uh, some film, right? Yep, two sided film. We always thought it was one. So about 15 plows in, we realized it was two. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it's all good. I, I don't really think anybody cares. That's more cosmetic, if you ask me. Exactly. There you go. All right, so Rick, where are we at right now, brother? Yeah, we're in the assembly, and uh, I take a lot of pride in the hydraulic cylinders. And I had the guys set up, and I wanted to show you how. We have automated our cylinders because we want to just make it right. So go ahead and hit it, Marty. That does that all automatically. They have about uh, six or eight welds on each cylinder, and they have to be leak free because we test every one of them. And then you can just see how good and hear how good that's welded. Fully off. So what are we looking at? You said fully automated, fully hydraulic. Yep, it, we hit the button. It, it turned on the, the welder. It starts the rotisserie and it times out and it welds it. Wow. We got one on the other side. We got another turntable ready here. This is a, a flat weld. This is a flat weld. That's the other weld that goes in like the same spot. So the other one was doing the 
one right at the, the cylinder. Okay. And then this one's doing the top side of the same one. There's two welds right there. So it does it all automatically. Wow. More production. And it's, I don't know what we got. Maybe 2% leaks now, but we check every one of them. We used to have 10, 15% leaks because we were hand welding them. This just holds it precise all the time. So show me this really quick. Where was this going right here? So this did this flat weld. The one on the other side did the one that attaches it to the hydraulic cylinder. I got you. That's uh, all innovation from you guys here. Right. That's awesome. Yep, we got three welders, but we can just crank them out. Production's going through the roof, we can't keep up, so we gotta innovate it. Look at that. And this whole facility is where it's all made. That's right. These are the rolls for the for the main board, for the wings, so that we can roll them. That's incredible. Yeah. And you know what all this all does? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these machining over there are rods right now. Well, show me that. Let's go, I'll follow you. All right. This is like America 101, at least old school America. Actually, he's threading. He's got it all set up and we're threading the tube. Turn the, maybe turn the coolant off. I got right now. I have it set to where the uh, bore is already done. So, go ahead and put it in the If you want to get right up in there, walk get on in. I got you, brother. It's all those shavings in there that are coming off. Is it boring it wider? It's cutting a single point thread in it. A single point what? Thread. Thread, okay. With this guy. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, so it's like creating a screw. Yes. Like a, a thread. A nut. Wow. No way. Yeah. How does it know how to do that? You pre program it? What? You did that? Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's actually pretty dope. You can make it. So here's a handheld version. Okay. A gauge, and then this screws into it. This is our gland nut. So this will screw into the end of that yeah. like that. Yeah. You guys are doing all this. Wow. High tolerances. Yeah. Wow. I make the gland nut also. That's incredible. Look at that. That was just a solid piece of aluminum. Okay, right. Those are smaller gland nuts, smaller, smaller rod cylinders. It just got wow. done. That's awesome. And that just got done? Yeah. So it's got the threads on the end now. Check that out. And then all your shavings are down here, huh? Right. Wow. So now we can test it. Oh. It just made the thread. Got to go all the way in. Wow. So you are just innovating on the fly. Like you guys can do this real time. If you got a problem or you want to change something, or you want to improve something every day. We want to make the cylinder one inch longer, we'd make it an inch longer. Wow. Our R&D is like 10 times faster than anybody else. Wow. Because we can build it right on the spot. So it's like Tesla, like you just fix it on the spot. We do it all, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. All right, so what are we looking at these two? So we start out with a billet piece of aluminum and we could turn it into a gland nut and it takes less than five minutes. But there's a lot of inside stuff there that we've been testing. There's there's uh, the seals in the, in the um, what do they call it, the wear bands and everything. So we've been testing and innovating, seeing what works best. Um, we, our R&D department, just, it's, we're relentless. We're trying to make it better. But yeah, we can make that to this in five minutes. Look at that. All in-house. That's incredible. All right, so Devin's hooking up the controller. Right, so you're already ready to rock and roll? I'm always ready. Always ready. No issues there. There you go, man. I feel like we were just here yesterday doing this, doesn't it? 
Yeah, so Both, uh, I think it was about this time last year. It was, yeah. Within a couple days. Uh, it's incredible how fast time flies, man. Yeah. Not that much. Bro, you make this look good. I said you make this look good. You know what you're, you know what you're doing here, man. I've, pro I've done so many, I don't even want to think about how many I've done. <laughs> Whatever, bro. I'm impressed, as always. New kickstands. There you go. Yeah, whenever uh, it gets about fall time, I got 20, 30 of my buddies that come in here. I set all their trucks up. Yeah. I go through all of them. No, you're my guy, dude. That was awesome. There you go. Look at that down pressure. Did you do transport or was that the automatic? So see how it brings it up to level for you? Yeah, yeah. Just by holding the lift for a second and a half, or a second and quarter. That's the new setting. I got you. Heck yeah. Now, do I still do transport? You can still do transport to pull it in and everything. Yeah. That's just doing enough to trip it up for you. Okay. All the corners don't drag anymore. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, come here, Coco. Good boy. That was double tap up. Yep. Okay. With that function also. I think the water is the water trapped in the uh, spiral wrap. It's the markers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Cool deal. All right. Thanks, guys. Bryson, I'm on the road, bro. All right. Thank you as always. Hey, travel safe. It's always good seeing you. Absolutely, we'll man. Meet up here soon. Your dad had to get running earlier. He had a doctor appointment, but uh, big shout out to Rick. Hopefully he's watching the video. Yep. Where can people get more info? Uh, snowpower.com, snow-power.com. All right, man. We'll leave some links in the description, guys, down below. I got to get running, and uh, we'll catch up with you guys here on the next video.